clicker. I'm not, I'm in, I'm in, I'm meant to try and pick one up, but oh well, I'll just have to point when I need a next slide. Um, the title of today's sermon is Just Don't Worry. How many of us have heard that advice at some point? Just don't worry about it. Has there ever been a more frustrating piece of advice to hear? <laughs> just don't worry. Yeah, I'll just do that, shall I? I'll just stop worrying. Oh, it's so frustrating. And yet this is the advice Jesus gives us. Just don't worry about it. Just stop worrying. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> because he provides. <laughs> <laughs> I, when Andy told me a few weeks ago, uh, a, a month ago, that uh, he'd, he'd like to preach on this, I was over because it's a beautiful passage, one of my favorite passages in the Bible. And then I spent three weeks worrying <laughs> what on earth am I going to say? What's going to come out of my mouth when I stand up here? What if I say something ridiculous or stupid or can't get my words out? Because I'm a worrier. I don't know about you, but I worry. I worry about everything. And, uh, and in fact, many of you have heard about my worries over the last week about what I'm going to say up here. And uh, uh, I'm very grateful for the prayer of those of you who have heard those. Um, but I realized pretty quickly in preparing that there's no way that I can preach on this passage without being a massive hypocrite. Because I'm a worrier. But I think there's an element of, I don't think many people could preach on not worrying without being a hypocrite, because we all worry. So rather than pretend that I'm not a worrier, I thought I'd count how many times I've worried. Over the last week, I have worried 197 times. I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed I didn't break the 200, um, but, uh, but I worry so much. I've worried about all sorts. Not only what I'm going to say, I've worried about what's going to happen in the future. What's, what, what am I going to do with my finances? What am I going to do, what's going on with my friends? I've even worried that I worry too much. But the thing is, you only have to turn on the news for five seconds to realize that there's a thousand things we need to worry about. It's as if we're spoon-fed, that we need to worry. You've got to worry. There's so many things you need to worry about. And this leads to a problem, because we can see the impact of that in the world. I've got some not-so-fun facts about worrying. Uh, Nearly 25% of the US population has been diagnosed with mental health disorders, such as social anxiety or clinical depression. Anxiety, uh, worry is crippling people. Over 73% of college students reported feeling moderate to severe psychological stress. And yet, a study shows that 91% of our worries are either completely baseless or otherwise don't, do not come to fruition. 91% of our worries are needless. Worrying is an epidemic. It's infecting us all. Now, speaking about worrying college students, as you know, I have a go-to rule in a sermon, which is, when in doubt, pick on the Moreland students. Uh, so I'm going to invite them up here for, for, for me. Uh, Come on up. Uh, you, uh, if you were here last week, you'll, you'll have met Sebastian. Dan is, of course, our returning Moreland student. Um, but this is Sebastian, who is joining us this year. Uh, he doesn't quite know what he's gotten himself in for yet. Um, but uh, hopefully this week's going to show him a bit. Uh, I just want to clip one of these on each of your fingers for, uh, for a minute. Uh, uh, there you go. There you go. And there's a button on there and there. Um, because the, the, these are going to monitor your heart rate for me, because I want to know how worried you are. Because the more we worry, the more your body wants to uh, push various uh, chemicals around your body. Uh, so this should tell us your heart rate. So you, uh, Claire, what's, Claire, Claire is my fiance, she's a GP. What's a normal heart rate? Less than 100. Less than 100. Um, and at what point should we call an ambulance? <laughs> Uh, so we've got 86 over here and 86 over here. Fantastic. You're both doing exactly the same. That's a great starting point. Um, so what I want you to do now is just not worry, okay? D don't worry, okay? Whatever you do, stop worrying. I said stop worrying. Stop worrying. It's going up. Uh, and whatever you do, do not think about these balloons or what's in them. Um, don't, don't worry about why I'm putting a tarpaulin out. Um, 
Uh, I've got two volunteers who have, have very kindly agreed to come and give me a hand, Sam and Tom. Um, can I get you to stand under these balloons? But don't worry about them, whatever you do. Don't, don't, don't worry. Uh, actually, I, I promised uh, uh, Sam that uh, he'd be able to do this one, so you stand there. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah just, just stand under the balloon, but do not worry about it, whatever you do. I, I've, I've got some tasks for you guys, okay? And you're going to be competing against each other, but not only is it a task of trying to do the task to the best of your ability, the task is do not worry, okay? So do not let your heart rate increase, no matter what happens. So your first task is you're going to have a minute to build the tallest tower you possibly can out of Jenga, okay? You've got these giant Jenga pieces. You've got to build the tallest tower that you possibly can. You've got one minute. So are you ready? And don't forget, do not worry. Stop worrying. As many as you like. Ready, steady, go. Oh, it's not got sound. There should be dramatic music playing. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, Sebastian's got up to an lead. Don't worry about it. Don't forget about the balloons that are above your head. Um, don't think about uh, the consequences of if you fail. Oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll sort that in a second. You've got 30 seconds left. You have to hurry up. Dan is catching up. 19 seconds. Oh, not a lot of time remaining. 13, 12, 11, 10. We all count down. 9, 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop! Oh, oh that's very close. I think this one is ever so slightly taller. Look, that's very, I, I, think, I think Dan, you have won this one. Oh no! Too late. Oh, Sebastian, you've won this round. <laughs> but let, let, let's look at your worryometers. How, how, oh dear, 101, that's gone very up. Oh, this has turned off. Claire's yours broke. Uh, uh, so you've gotten a lot more worried. I think yours won't run out of battery, Claire. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll just swap that over. So. Uh, dramatic pause for effect. Uh, I got no heart rate. He, 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 he's I dead. Uh, oh, no, oh, there we go. You're on 66. Your heart rate's gone down. How have you managed that? You've worried. Okay, so here's the thing. This competition is based on uh, who has done better. So Sebastian, you have done better, but you've worried more. Okay, so it's kind of even at the minute. So we're going to do another challenge. I did, did I mention that there is a consequence to the loser, by the way? The person who worries more is going to get these balloons popped, uh, hence why I've got these two volunteers who have uh, uh, done this. But I'm not going to tell you when they pop it, by the way. So, uh, so don't worry about it. Just, just don't think about it. Keep, keep it out of your mind. I'm going to move, <laughs> move these to the side for a minute, and I've got another challenge for you. Uh, challenge number two is... I've got some Jaffa cakes. Now, I want you to balance this on your forehead, like that, and you're going to try and wiggle it into your mouth without using your hands. Okay? So that's the challenge. You've got a minute to do that. Do you think you can do that? Okay. Right. Lean back. There's one. Yeah, yeah. Got to, got to get the melty chocolate on them. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, Oh, now my clicker's not working. <laughs> oh. Okay, go. Oh. It's doing all the clicks now. There we go. Okay, go. Got one minute. Now, do, do not worry about how ridiculous you look at the minute. Don't worry about uh, whether or not you're beating the other person. Oh, dear, Dan. Oh. Quick, put it back on, back on. You've got a minute. On your forehead. Don't worry about what uh, your opponent's doing. D don't worry about the fact that these balloons might be popped at any moment. Don't worry about the fact that this is going on the internet so people will be able to see this forever. Uh, 
Bad news, both of you failed, but more importantly, how you got down again? What is wrong with you? How are you not worrying? You're down to 64. This is very impressive. Let me, let me let's have a look at Sebastian. The power of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sebastian now doesn't have a heart rate. He, he might have, yeah, he might have worried so much that uh, he's, he's overloaded the machine. Uh, we'll just have to go with that. Oh, there, here we go. We're up to 96. Okay, you've gone down a little bit. It's, it's upside down. It's this way. It's this oh, way. It? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, so Sebastian, you're clearly the more worried at the minute. Um, so may, maybe, Dan, you have less to worry about then if, if Sebastian's more worried, because he's currently losing, I think we can say. He's, he's more stressed. He's failed one task, whereas you're less stressed and you've you f although you less stressed me failed two tasks, so may maybe it's even, who knows? But you, you can eat your jaff cake now, by the way, if you'd like to. Uh, uh, I've got one last task to decide uh, who, is who, is, who is going to fail. So I need you to stand under your balloon. Sebastian comes down here. I need you to face each other. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a category, okay? And you're going to have five seconds to name something within that category, okay? So if it is uh, songs by the Beatles, you might say, let it be. And then you've got five seconds to say, um, Yellow, submarine. Yellow Submarine. And it'll go back and forth until eventually one of you will, will fail, OK? It has to be like the letter, right? You said, let it be. <coughs> no, no. It's be a song with a letter B. In the no, it's not a song with a letter B. So that, that was a song by the Beatles, was, was the example there. Oh. It, that's not what, what this one's going to be. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> So, okay, so your category is, are you ready for it? Your category is, where am I pointing? Is <laughs> okay, we'll do it without the time. Your category is brands of fizzy drinks. Go, Dan. Yeah, it's got to be a brand. Five, four, four, three, two, one, zero. Oh dear, oh dear, Sebastian. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm afraid that you failed. But have you worried? You've worried more again. You're up to 90. No, you're up to 97. Sorry. Oh, we've gotten you very worried. Oh, how, how are you doing, Dan? How, how's your worrying going? Uh, let, let's see if you've managed to remain as cool as you were before. Uh, oh, here we go. He, oh, you're, you're, you're up to 85. You've worried a lot that time. That one did worry you. Oh, dear. Okay, let, 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 let's go to the congregation. How, how do you think they did? You, you, th you think they did good? <laughs> can, can, can I ask? Do you think their worry helped them? No. no, and let me tell you why. Because no matter what they did, they were never in control. I was. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how much they worried, they were never in control of this situation. I was always in control. And given the choice, I was always going to pop that balloon. <laughs> Guys, thankfully, we have a much kinder God than me. Thankfully, our God is kind and generous and nice. Guys, I've got some, uh, some towels for you uh, to dry ourselves off. Thank you, Chris. Thank oh, you. So thank you. Oh, can we give our monsters a round of applause and our volunteers? Oh. Really, you guys can go sit down. Uh, <laughs> oh, wonderful.
wonderful. Well, thank you very much. And then put those there. Yeah, go, go and take a seat. If you want to use the toilet to dry yourself off, then, then feel free. <laughs> You've really got a full brunt of that here. Let me, let me help you with that. Get that off your shoulder. There you go. <laughs> Is that the page I'm on? That is, yeah. As, as I said at the start, do not worry is the most frustrating advice to hear. It is advice which is really annoying to hear, but it's pretty good advice. And it's the advice Jesus gives. But he doesn't just say, don't worry, and leaves it there. He gives us reasons why we shouldn't. And I think, I think in fact, he gives us three good reasons not to worry. Firstly, it's inconsistent. It's inconsistent with the things we believe. If we believe there is more to life than the physical, and the other stuff is way more important, why are we still worrying about the physical? This whole passage is in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and uh, he's talking a lot about the relationship between the physical and the heavenly stuff. He's saying that our treasures in heaven are way more important. The things that go on in the God's kingdom are infinitely more important than the things that go on in the physical. And yet, this is the stuff that we worry about. We worry about what we're going to do. We worry about what, how we're going to live. We worry about all sorts of things in the physical. That's inconsistent with what we believe. We believe that God's kingdom is a billion times more important. And that's already secured. What we worry about compared to eternity is nothing. And Jesus said, it says, is life not more than food? The body not more than clothes? Jesus isn't saying don't eat. He's not saying don't wear clothes. Um, this would be a rubbish sermon if that's what you'll take away. Um, he's saying that we need to care about the things that actually matter. And the things that actually matter, they're taken care of. Second reason we shouldn't worry. So firstly, we've got it's inconsistent. Secondly, it's irrational. If we truly believe that God is actually in control and that he is good, why would we need to worry? God is not a God who likes to suddenly dunk balloons on us. He's a good God and he is in control. If I believe those two things, what on earth am I worrying about? It's irrational. It doesn't make sense for me to worry. And this is what Jesus says. He says, look at the birds of the air. Do they not sow or reap or store away? They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Guys, we have an amazing God. We have a God who loves you far more than he cares about birds. And yet, he cares about the birds enough to ensure that they're looked after. If he cares about them, how much more does he care about you? Why on earth would we need to worry if that's the case? So we've got it's inconsistent and irrational, but what's more, it's ineffective. It doesn't work. Worrying doesn't help us. Again, if God is truly in control, what can we achieve by worrying? Just as, it, as, as when the, the Mormon students were stood here, I was in control the entire time. I knew that they were going to get dunked. I had decided weeks ago that they were going to get dunked. I, I decided before I'd written my sermon that they were going to get dunked. God has known every day of your life since before the world began. He's known every single day of your existence for billions of years. He's known, he's known exactly how you're going to live and what's going to happen in your life from the very start of creation. If God's decided that, and God knows that, and God is in control, why do we need to worry? Why, why, what can our worry achieve? What can we actually do by worrying? Jesus says, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? 
There's a bit of debate about what Jesus actually meant in what he said, whether, he, whether he, he, some people think he's talking about height. Can any of you add like an inch to your height? Or can you add an hour to your life? There's a bit of debate about what Jesus actually said. But either way, the point is the same. Your worrying doesn't achieve anything. In fact, from what we know of science, by worrying, you reduce your life. That's, <laughs> your worrying does not achieve anything. Your worrying doesn't help you. It's not the answer. So why don't we worry? Because it's inconsistent, it's irrational, and it's ineffective. Now, that doesn't mean life's always going to be easy. That doesn't mean you're not going to face hardships or struggles. That's not what this passage is saying, and frankly, it's not what the Bible says. Uh, there are going to be hardships, there are going to be difficulties. That, that's actually something the Bible promises us. It promises us it's not going to be easy. But what it is saying is that worrying isn't the answer. And it's not because it's inconsistent with what we believe, it's irrational, and it's ineffective. So ultimately, it all comes down to one big question. Who's in control? Let me ask you, if you were able to control every single thing in your life, every single variable, every single little thing, decide how it goes, would you worry? Would you? I wouldn't. If I, if I could control, had complete control over everything, I, I wouldn't see any need to worry. The problem is that I don't have control over things. So the, the solution to worry is one of two things. Option number one, we can gain control over everything. We can grasp and try and cling to control and try and control all the little variables to the point where we don't need to worry. You're not going to achieve that. That's not a viable option. You're never going to have full control. Or option number two, we can trust the one who does. We can trust that there is someone out there who has control and full control. My experience is that virtually all of us, we're trying to cling to as much control as we possibly can. We're trying to grip and grasp this control, but we feel it slip through our fingers, and that's why we worry because we can't be in control. Because the Christian answer is that there is someone in control, and that's God. And tr trying to get all that control is not going to work. Trusting God might. If God is in control and God is good, and I believe both those things, we can trust in him. And I want to show you why we should trust God over trust our own ability. Because I, may, I, I, I bought a mint plant uh, we had a, we had a, had a sale here at the church a little while ago of, of plants, and I bought I bought this mint plant. Uh, and people who know me know that I'm not a gardener, and uh, no matter how hard I try, I I have a knack of not keeping things alive. Um, but I have tried so hard with this mint plant. I have worked so hard. I have uh, watered it every single day. I've bought plant food for it. I even built a little wooden trellis for it to help it climb. I have worked so hard with this mint plant. Let me show you my mint plant. Oh, that's not my mint plant. Okay, you're going to have to imagine a rotting plant. <laughs> you, you can see that, that, that brown leaf at the top, that's about the most healthy leaf. Um, my, my mint plant is not going well. Because no matter how, and I, I have tried so hard, I have fed it every single day, but it's not going well. Do you know what? I was walking outside the church last week, and there was a perfect mint plant just outside, which had grown seemingly of its own fruition. I, I don't think it grew of its own fruition. God cared for that plant. Guys, why would we want the best we can do? If that's the best we can do, why would we want that when we can have the best God can do? What God offers is so much better than what we can do. I, if, I think this is a good metaphor for life. Why, why would I want to try and control everything? Because when I try and control things, they fall apart. Or I can trust in God and know that he has a plan. I can trust that he is good and righteous and kind and that he will look after me and that he knows what he's do doing. 
I think given the choice, we'd all choose the nice mint plant that God made rather than my mint plant. When you're having your pims next summer, if I offer you mint, I wouldn't take it. It's rubbish. <laughs> so what do we do when we're worried? We, we don't have time to fully dissect all of the things that we should do when we're worried today. But in short, in this passage, Jesus gives us three things that we, can do, we should do when we're worrying. He says... Look at the birds of the air. That's number one. And he goes on to say, they're neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life, to the span of your life? And when you do, wor- and, and when you worry about clothing, this is number two, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For the Gentiles strive for these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. And the third thing we can do, first strive for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Those, those are the three things we can do when we worry, guys. We, we, we can consider the, the lilies, we can look at the birds of the air, we can think of God's goodness to those things, and then we can strive for his kingdom, his righteousness. Because ultimately, I did not have 197 things to worry about this week. What I had was 197 opportunities to remember God's goodness to remember that God has a plan, to remember that he is kind and righteous and in control, and that he cares about me far more than the birds of the air or the flowers of the field. Worrying is not the solution to our problems. Jesus is, always. We wanted to give you a chance to respond to this, so hopefully you should all have a leaf which... uh, looks like this one. Um, And we want to give you an opportunity to reflect on this. So in a minute, there's going to be a song that plays. um, And we're going to give you a couple of minutes to to do what it says on the screen, to reflect on things that are worrying you. And then, if you'd like to, you can come forward and bring your leaf to the tree as a symbol of bringing your worry to Jesus. And then you can reflect for a moment on how trustworthy Jesus is. And then you can leave your leaf on the tree as a symbol of letting go and leaving your worries with him. So we want to give give you a minute to to do that, to reflect on that. And we're going to do that now. Said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know why those anxious human beings rush about and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, friend, I think that it must be They have no Heavenly Father such as cares for you and me.